All right, so let's take some time and overview the skeletal system and not like all the names and the parts, the anatomy. Let's talk a little bit more about the physiology and some anatomy that's like generalized. So parts that most bones share. So starting with, let's talk about zooming into those cells on the inside of our bone. With the cells, three of them are related. They're from the same family tree. You're gonna start with osteoprogenitors. Osteoprogenitors are your stem cells. They make specific bone cells. The bone cells that they make are called osteoblasts. With a B there, these are going to be your bone builders. Now, osteoblasts, what they're doing is they're laying down an osteoid, and then that will calcify or harden to actually create bone. These osteoblasts will start laying down bone in different directions. And so I always kind of use the analogy, it's like you're painting the floor and then you're just painting around yourself and all of a sudden you look down and you're like, I've painted myself into a spot, like, and you're stuck. That happens to these cells. They lay down bone all around them and then eventually they get stuck and they can no longer lay down any fresh bone. They're trapped within this calcified structure. And so when that happens, the name changes because they're no longer bone builders. They're going to be mature bone cells. So we're going to call those osteocytes. So notice there's a pattern here. Osteo on all of these, that part right there means bone. So osteoprogenitor, progenitor is the name for a stem cell. So bone stem cell, osteoblast, bone builder, osteocyte, site just means cell. And so these are the mature cells. Remember that space I said they're stuck in? That's called a lacuna. So these are the ones that are in the lacuna. I think of it like their little cocoon. That's their home. So these osteocytes, if they're mature, think about like what mature people are able to do. They're able to multitask, right? So that's what they'll do. They'll lay down bone and pick up bone, but like in their little space. So if you kind of picture it, like it'd be kind of like, okay, I'm gonna raise, and I'm gonna put some fresh stuff down. I might even thicken that a little bit. And then I could erase over here. So that's what they do. They just kind of make little changes within their little pocket controlling the little world. Oh, that's gonna bug me because it's now darker. That's better. So that we have this ability to kind of remodel your space and control your space. Now there is a third bone cell, but they're not related. Other than the fact they're in the bone, but they aren't part of the same family tree. Osteoprogenitors, remember, when they go through mitosis, they make osteoblasts. When osteoblasts get stuck in a lacuna, they become osteocytes, family tree. There are things called osteoclasts, and you see the C there, think bone chewer. Their job is to break down bone. And so they're not related to these cells like in a direct lineage. They're, if they're chewers and they eat things, guess what they're related to? Phagocytes, they phagocytize things. Now, when you're looking for locations on all of these, if you're going to break down bone, you're gonna to wanna to do it from the edges. Same thing if you're gonna make new cells or Lay down fresh bone. You want to do it from the edges. So if we look at a bone, and so let's just draw a generic looking bone over here. So this is our bone. And on that bone, you have a couple of features. I guess we can label it all while we're here. So the ends are going to be the epiphyses. Epiphyses, plural, ES. If you see epiphysis, IS, that would just be one. So this would be one end and up here would be the other end. So this would be a proximal epiphysis because it's closer to the attachment, distal epiphysis down here. We have a metaphysis, it's kind of the tapering area here on both of these. Same rule, if I said metaphyses, that would be plural. The shaft of it is called the diaphysis. So that's all of this. And then if you look at the edges of it, so where I put kind of some defining spaces here, there's a dense irregular connective tissue that wraps around the whole thing to be protective. This is called the periosteum. Now this bone is hollow, you don't want it to be super heavy. So there's an open space, an open cavity in here and inside of there, depending on the age, you have red bone marrow when you're young and you're making a lot of red blood cells. You wanna have extra stem cells to kind of keep up with that new growth and development. And so we call it 
red bone marrow. And then as we age, we don't need to really kind of, we're not doubling in size or anything, we're kind of maintaining. And so we can really kind of get by with doing that production of red blood cells kind of in the epiphyses. And so we'll maintain red bone marrow there, but this will turn into yellow marrow, which is yellow for fat. You actually store fat in there. Yeah, who knew? You actually store fat in your bones, but you do. And so periosteum, outer coat here, and then lining this space, by the way, the space is called the medullary cavity. So the liner for the medullary cavity is the endosteum. So periosteum surrounds the outside, endosteum, think it's on the end, it's on the inside. And so these are the coats. That's where you find the osteoprogenitors, the osteoblasts, and the osteoclast, because you can lay down fresh out here and you can make it thicker. Or you could peel back from the outside and make it a little thinner. You can make adjustments there. So progenitor stem cells make fresh ones on the edge. You can add more width to things. So when you're looking at those three cells or looking for them, you're looking in the periosteum or the endosteum. The osteocytes, remember, those are the ones that are stuck. So they're actually in the bulky part of the bone. So they're kind of in here. So the little check marks here are telling you that you're in the periosteum or the endosteum. So you're on the edges. Remember, those osteocytes are trapped here, so those are in the lacuna. Or like the little cocoonas. All right, so those are your cells, some basic layout of uh, long bone. Let's kind of talk about the different ways we can form this and what we're making it from. So first off, bone like this, a long bone is gonna be made from cartilage. And so with cartilage formation, you're gonna have really kind of two things to keep track of. Sometimes you have to grow it longer, sometimes you have to grow it wider. So we're gonna have, with cartilage growth, two major types. And we'll have appositional, So we have appositional, you're growing upon something. And then we have interstitial, you're growing within something. And so appositional, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add width to it. And then interstitial, you're growing within. So you're gonna add length. And so let's kind of work through parts of this. So cartilage growth, these are the different types, and this is gonna help us form kind of like the, the foundation of our, our long bone here. And so if we're looking at apposition, we're gonna add width, we're gonna start in, instead of it being a periosteum, peri by the way means surround, os means bone, we're gonna start at a perichondrium, con for cartilage. So we're gonna start in a perichondrium, so I guess we'll do starts at. I guess we could put it there, this is adds. We're gonna turn this into a table. So adds width, adds length, starts at, and this is gonna start at the perichondrium, or, yep. And then here, we're starting within the cartilage. You're gonna start as, so this is what cell is it? You're, if you're out in the perichondrium, you're not really in the cartilage yet. So the cells there are still stem cells. You haven't differentiated them yet. So we're gonna have stem cells out here that start laying down fresh cartilage versus over here, if you're starting within the cartilage, that means they're cartilage cells. So we're gonna start with chondrocytes. Remember con for cartilage, site just means cell. So we're gonna start with the chondrocyte. Now, both of them are going to lay down fresh cartilage. So what is the cell that lays down fresh cartilage? What builds it? Well, they're both the same. They're both going to build with a chondroblast. We see that root again, builder. So we have a chondro builder now, so a cartilage builder. And then we're having the same thing here. The difference is just what made it. So over here, it was a stem cell made a chondroblast. Over here, it's a chondrocyte. Because unlike in bone, where these osteocytes are stuck in that lacuna, here, they're cartilage. They're actually, they're not trapped yet. So they can move out of that lacuna and they can actually divide. They can do cell division. And as they do that, they do their cell division. So here's one little chondrocyte sitting in its lacuna. It does mitosis. They can now then grow cartilage between each other and allowing you to grow in that length away from each other. So the chondrocyte turns into a chondroblast 
once it divides. And then they lay down a bunch of cartilage until they get stuck in a lacuna again all by themselves. And then they turn back into, so this is how you know it's done, they turn into mature cells again. So the chondroblast turns back into a chondrocyte when it's done growing. And you see this one over here doing the same thing. It turns into a chondrocyte. And that's going to make our blue parent print for forming our long bones. Now, do be aware of the fact that forming long bones doesn't cover everything. If you're forming a long bone, I could probably tell you that name. That's going to be endochondral ossification. So endochondral ossification, that's making long bones. But this should help make sense, right? I said you're making it over to cartilage. So you're going to grow on the ends and you're gonna grow within the cartilage. So we're gonna have growth plates actually in these metaphyses. So endochondral ossification is one form. Now, if you're using something to like make the bones of your skull a flat bone, that's gonna be intermembranous. Well, hi, me in the corner now to fix something that I just messed up. Because you know what? That's part of the learning process and I am human. And I wanted to leave the air in there because it's a really important thing that just happened or happened then, but just happened to you now. And it's the difference between intra and inter. And I know sometimes students get really frustrated with why does spelling matter so much in this class? Because if you mess up just a couple of letters, you're changing what you're talking about. And I just did it. So if you're looking at the term intra, is that like root versus inter, they mean different things. So inter means between versus intra means within. So when you're looking at intramembranous ossification, you're growing within a membrane. And I wrote intermembranous ossification. And inter would mean I'm growing between membranes, but there's not multiple membranes that you're growing within, with, with, between them. <laughs> you're growing within one. So it should be intramembranous ossification. So intra, because you're growing within that membrane. And then just regard the me saying inter there. I'm sorry. And so intermembranous ossification, that's for making flat bones. And there's some steps to both of those, but we can cover that in a different video. I think for now, we have a good sense of kind of some of the anatomy, some of the cells, different ways we can form cartilage. And then we'll kind of swing back into a different video to talk about how that looks step by step. Okay, thanks for watching.